Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay, guys. First video of the day. Hello, how are you? Good, great. Johnny Harris, awesome channel. Why Americans eat dessert for breakfast? I just had breakfast. Well, cereal. Let's find out. Original link to the video, top of the description, below that. Link to the Discord. Would love to have you. Click on it, send you right over there. Let's learn. Phones away. It's awesome. I f***ing hate American breakfast. <laughs> Every morning I need a good breakfast. Right away, a big bite of toast. For kids who like a square meal for breakfast. A wonderful new fruit in the box cereal. I mean, how did we get here? How did this become breakfast in my country? And what is breakfast even all about? Some people say it's the most important meal of the day, and others say that it's totally worthless and you don't even need to eat breakfast if you don't want to. Two pancakes with hot syrup and butter. I bet a lot of you watching don't eat breakfast in the morning. And you know who else doesn't eat breakfast in the morning? This guy. What do you eat for breakfast? Nothing. Billy. I grew up thinking that breakfast had to be a certain way. But then in my 20s, I started traveling and I learned that in fact, this version of breakfast is a very narrow, very American version of breakfast. Once I discovered non-American breakfast, I feel like my eyes were opened to a completely different approach to the first meal of the day. I wanna show you some of those breakfasts, but first let's talk about breakfast and how American breakfast got this way. For about 22 cents, you get as much nutrition as this bacon and egg breakfast when there's no time for your regular breakfast. Okay, before I jump into all of my opinions about breakfast, let's talk about science for a minute, like facts. Does breakfast matter? Is it actually the most important meal of the day like I was told my whole life? You can't be your best if you don't eat a good breakfast. Turns out there's data on this, lots of studies, but you don't need to read them all. In fact, don't read them all. Let me give you the 20 second version. Turns out the methods in a lot of these studies are really crummy. They weren't randomized controlled trials, like you know the gold standard for good science. And in a lot of cases, they didn't really study anything useful. They kind of hyper-focus on breakfast as it pertains to weight. And in most of these studies, they don't even focus on what the- Did not significantly dis- dif uh. The person is eating for breakfast, they only focus on whether they do or do- Sorry, I, I shouldn't have even paused there. They kind of hyper-focus on breakfast as it pertains to weight. And in most of these studies, they don't even focus on what the person is eating for breakfast, they only focus on whether they do or do not eat breakfast, regardless of what they're actually eating. And to add to all of this, a lot of these studies are funded by corporations who have a vested interest in making breakfast seem necessary. Um, big take, my, one of the things, all right, that you realize is just how much that, like, the big companies that got started in the late 1800s, early 1900s, how much they, even if they're not a monopoly, they just kind of work together with their competitors in a way to benefit, uh, how they've been able to kind of manipulate stuff into creating what I just assumed was the standard. Th does that make sense? Very unhealthy. So yeah, there's a lot of science on this, but the science does not come to any useful conclusions and is oftentimes just poorly conducted. What this means is that there's no real evidence that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And I mean, there's I, nothing I, special I, or magic about breakfast. I can't That's not have breakfast. That's more of a breakfast. marketing myth than anything else. Had any really good days lately? Like when the sun shines brighter and people seem friendlier and work goes faster? Days like that. Well, the really good days start out good with new Carnation Instant Breakfast. Okay, wait, but there is a little caveat in this. If you're like an eight-year-old kid or like a teenager and you're like in school, there actually is some useful evidence that says that eating breakfast in the morning is good for your learning and brain development. Guys, I was one of those kids. All right, lunch was my favorite subject in school. Uh, it's not so. I, every day, whenever lunch came around, I got so excited. I was one of those kids who was sprinting down the hall, like knocking chairs out of the way in the cafeteria to get the front spot. And so I, I had to eat breakfast because I wasn't a great student to begin with. I wasn't terrible, but I wasn't great. And 
And I, if if I I would never be able to concentrate if, if I didn't at least have a little something in my stomach because I was already starving by the time lunch came around anyway. Anyways, yeah. So that's the caveat. There actually is evidence there. For the rest of us, though, if you like breakfast in the morning, eat breakfast in the morning. If you're not into that, don't do it. Okay, that's that's it. But unless you're a kid, but I don't know how many kids are watching. Okay, so that's the science on this. Turns out that I was a person for many years who thought that I didn't like breakfast, that I didn't need to eat breakfast. Growing up in a small town in Oregon, I didn't have a ton of exposure to other cultures and other things, and so my version of breakfast was this. Have a bowl of cornflakes, spoon them from the dish. And there was some bacon. This is all I knew as breakfast food. When we would eat like eggs and bacon for dinner, we were having breakfast for dinner. This food was inseparable from the institution of breakfast. If you're not from the United States, let me just break down what American breakfast is and its story, where it came from. I'll split it out into two main categories of breakfast in the United States. One I call diner breakfast. It kind of looks like this. And the other I will call cereal, which is everything from Pop-Tarts to Fruit Loops. Where are the Fruit Loops? I didn't bring any. <laughs> to granola bars to Carnation Instant. Smart. That's a good a. Uh... That, that's a good two category separation. Breakfast. It's like the quick stuff that's in our pantries that we can just consume before work. First, let's talk about diner breakfast. There's no better reference for what diner breakfast is in the United States than the official menu of IHOP, which is so inappropriately named I don't think... as the International House of Pancakes. Welcome to the International House of Pancakes. Hi. At IHOP, this American- I don't think I have ever been to an IHOP institution. You can start your day with this, the stuffed French toast, which effectively looks like my birthday cake. Or you can get really cultured and hop over to Italy for some Nutella crepes. Or how about the Belgian waffle combo, which isn't just a waffle, but also comes with bacon and eggs. Perhaps you're feeling savory. So how about this breakfast sampler where you can eat a pig in three different ways? Because who just wants to eat bacon when you could have all three? All of this accompanied by french fries. I mean, sorry, uh, hash browns. But why settle for these meager options when you could go with the Cinestack pancakes? Oh, which come late I'm getting a stomachache just looking at that. Look, I, uh, I, uh, I have a pretty soy st weak stomach, okay? And so I, I could maybe eat two bites of that. I, you know what? If you could eat this whole thing, I would be impressed. I would be legitimately impressed because I, I, I don't know how anyone could finish a whole one of those without like uh, puke. Layered with a luscious cinnamon roll filling and drizzled with rich cream cheese icing and topped with, you guessed it, whipped cream. Icing for breakfast. Now here's the thing, this diner style American breakfast is inspired by Europe. American pancakes look you a did lot this to like us. other sweet, flat, unleavened breads that it's are bigger. eaten all over the world and especially in Europe. We just deemed it necessary to fry it in butter and then put more butter on top and then drizzle literal liquid sugar over top and eat it for breakfast. That was the only modification we made to this wonderful tradition of European pancakes. The idea of eating pork-based cured meats in the morning is also a European tradition. It comes from like the traditional English breakfast, which is delicious. We just decided to we... get rid of some elements from that, like... Like the healthier stuff? Uh, but mushrooms, we gotta bring back mushrooms into breakfast. Mushrooms are one of the most tasty, just like natural, like you don't, just like, you get it, you can throw it into a pan to heat to cook it slightly. You don't really even need a lot, and it still tastes really good. Strawberries? There's no way strawberries weren't messed with. How can something taste so good? It's like a candy from Nate. Um, okay, sorry. Go. The beans and the tomatoes and the mushrooms. Who needs those anyway? Where are the fruit loops? The American <laughs> waffle comes from the beautiful, delicious tradition of the Belgian or Liège waffles, which are served in dessert stores as desserts in Belgium. They're delicious. The modification we made was to eat them for breakfast and then decide to take out the best part, which is the pearl sugar, the crystallized sugar that makes a Belgian waffle or a Liège waffle delicious. Mm. 
and I'm gonna disagree here. I I had one. Um, it wasn't in Belgium. It was in Innsbruck, Austria. Or sorry, yeah, Innsbruck, Austria, at a a pretty nice restaurant, but in the breakfast area. And so like they're like crystallized sugar within the waffle. And I thought like I didn't like it because I thought it was way too sweet. But I, look, I, I'm not on board with a bunch of these crazy American sweet breakfast so you can't say oh you think that's sweet yet american I, I don't like super sweet american breakfast either but i think i had if i'm talking about like not the correct waffle then my bad but i'm pretty sure i'm i am yeah to summarize this diner style took european traditions turned them into breakfast and modified them by making them lower quality bigger portions and usually slathering them with cream and maple syrup all you can eat pancakes this calls for all you can eat silverware get ihops all you can eat pancakes free okay, when that, you buy any that's actually a kind of funny commercial or is that just uh, breakfast combo i mean icing for breakfast it's just it just doesn't sound good okay so that's the diner version of american breakfast a big important category of what americans like to eat for breakfast Group. the other category Group. looks like this Cereals. This Yo is play. the stuff that's in our pantry. Yo play. I like Yo play. Looks oh, except it's like che strawberry cheesecake. Yo, just I just like I like vanilla. Yo play. This is the stuff that's in our pantries. This is the stuff we eat before we go to work. It's quick. It's what I grew up eating as a child. Let's call this the cereal category. I like this that. food came into our lives and became widespread because of one main force, industrialization. The factory whistle awakened people in the mornings and measured off their long days of toil. With the birth of factories and the standardized workday, suddenly you had demand for a consistent, quick, convenient food in the morning to fuel you for the day. Paired with that, you also now had technology to mass produce products that would fit this demand. Perhaps the best symbol of this shift towards mass produced, easy, convenient breakfast food is cornflakes. Kellogg's cornflakes. The Kellogg's Corporation, which made cornflakes, was a pioneer. Like the basic, basic cereal. Cornflakes. The Kellogg's Corporation, which made cornflakes, was a pioneer in making this breakfast food. I popular. like frosted cornflakes, even though that's just cornflakes with sugar. So I guess I'm going against my. Uh, made cornflakes was a pioneer in making this breakfast food popular, not only because they were able to mass produce it and cheaply sell it, but also because they marketed it in this way that made it feel like the most important thing in the world. I want some cornflakes now. I really do. There was a problem over time in the world. But there was a problem. Over time, people would look at this lousy bowl of cornflakes and be like, who wants to eat this? This is boring. But America had a solution. All we needed to do was pump it full of sugar. One big gulp of it. Gives me lots of energy. For this nutritious breakfast. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, what was that? Nutritious breakfast. Jeez. That Man, that's, one. That's pretty aggressive right there. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's how I feel after I eat a Pop Tart as well. Anyway, people started to believe that breakfast, and especially these commodities, which were quickly becoming dessert disguised as breakfast, the ultimate fruit flavor, were the key to a healthy morning and a good start to the day. And soon I was born into a world. A world where breakfast products and norms were cemented before me. A world where millions of Americans would wake up in the morning and consume dessert disguised as breakfast. Your muffin is just a cupcake in disguise. That cup of yogurt might as well be a scoop of ice cream. And then there's the mighty donut. The food that does scoop is churning and consume dessert disguised as breakfast. Your muffin is just a cupcake in disguise. That cup of yogurt 
Might as well be a scoop of ice cream. My life is a lie. And then there's the mighty donut. The donut. food that doesn't even pretend to be breakfast. It's just literal dessert and it's like shamelessly just like, hey, I'm dessert, you wanna eat me for breakfast? And a lot of people are like, yeah. I mean, I kind of respect that. I'm kind of like, if you're gonna be dessert, just like represent Admit yourself. It. I respect the donut. But wait, let me make one thing clear. My issues with this have nothing to do with nutrition, even sugar or calories or any of that. I, I actually have a big issue with our obsession with categorizing food by its numbers and its constituent parts. Not into that, I don't really care. My problem My man. is that I don't like this food. I just genuinely do not want to wake up and consume dessert for breakfast. If you do like this stuff for breakfast, that's awesome. I have no issues with you and I'm not gonna try to convince you to change that. Cereal pancakes. Yum. Whoops. This is why I like Chick-fil-A breakfast, okay? Because in the morning, I don't want this sweet stuff. I want like a chicken biscuit sandwich or a chicken sandwich or a burger with fries. But no, sometimes you can go, sometimes some uh, places will be, be like fast or be like, breakfast all day well can you do the opposite and give me lunch all day and i felt like i was the only weirdo who thought that way because and apparently johnny feels this cinnamon toast crunch lucky charms and cabin crunch oh okay so a little bit of time has passed and a few things have changed number one i got a haircut but number two looks nice i think i'm cracking the code on how to change my breakfast experience. I've spent the past few months thinking a lot about breakfast and I've started to introduce different breakfast cultures into my morning routine that have really changed my world. I'm not gonna share all this with you now because this video would be like 30 minutes long, but I have been filming all of this and it has been a really interesting journey to invite different breakfast cultures into my world. If enough people are interested and you leave comments somewhere, I will share it and make a video about what breakfast looks like for me these days. Spoiler alert, there's no icing. I still have my occasional bowl of Lucky Charms, which is a delicious cereal. I don't like Lucky Charms. It's one of my least favorite cereals because of the marshmallows. Like I, I'd rather have Lucky Charms without the charms. I, I don't. I just. I'm not a marshmallow. I'm. Uh, I. I didn't. And the occasional pancake with my kids. It's great stuff. I mean, I'm not above that food. Tradition. It's just not what I want to eat every morning. So anyway, I'll share that if you're interested. Lastly, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, which is Skillshare, which is a place where I have learned a lot of my. Guys, please, please make sure to use the slash Johnny Harris ten. Um, if this interests you and you find it here. Please, uh, it helps him out. Video skills. I'm reacting to his stuff, least I can do here. But they also have cooking tutorials, I discovered. They have a course on there about how to make the perfect grilled cheese sandwich, which, by the way, is an amazing breakfast. And it's one of thousands that Skillshare has of all different types of topics, whether it is animation and video, which is, are the courses I've taken, or entrepreneurship. I, I failed putting up my thing. Business photography, design, like basically everything. Skillshare is incredibly cheap, and for you it could be completely free for two months. You could have access to all of these tutorials for free if you go to the link in my description. Click that link, it helps support this channel, but more importantly, it kicks off your journey of learning something new uh, for free, for two months. That's like two, two months, that's like 60 days of zero money playing around with this really awesome resource on the internet. And then after that, it's like less than 10 bucks a month if you do the annual subscription, which is just ridiculously cheap for what you're getting. Thank you, Skillshare, for supporting this channel and letting me make these Thanks, videos. Thanks, Skillshare. And thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next one. Thank you for making. All right, guys. Thank you all for taking it out with me, watching this really cool video. And I'm going to watch this one next, uh, How I Stopped Hating Breakfast. Okay, how I, s all right, so I'm going to be, yes, it's going to be, well, we'll find out in a second, all right? See you guys next time, but I hope you're doing well. Love y'all. Chin up. Believe me, all right, if you're not doing well, you could be good tomorrow, but then that means the opposite if, uh, never mind, you'll be okay. Bye, guys.